What do we have here? Time to get to work. What the heck is this? 10,000 K subs in 10,000 staples. This must have something to do with that idiot, Kevin Kennedy. Uh. show live from Arlington, Massachusetts. We're going to serve you up a beautiful bowl of coconut fiber. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> You're on that. One, two, three, four. Oh, I was just counting staples in the sleeves. <laughs> Making sure that my supply didn't rip me off. I'm just kidding. Well, as you can see by those two, uh, the 10,000 subscriber video and, and the regular intro, that I give my son a little bit of license, and uh, he also directs me sometimes. So we have fun. We like to have fun with these too, right? But there is a serious side. We've got a lot of work to do, Wonderful. and we've the got phone goes off right somebody's calling. Maybe this is somebody. I don't think so. I think that's a that's a customer. Actually, why not answer it? You guys might, you people out there who are learning how to do a, a, a shop, run a shop, let's just see. I won't put over, hello, upholstery on Broadway. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. I, uh, we are doing online classes, Katina. So this is, this is a person inquiring about, uh, I'm just talking to a couple other people. Uh, while I'm talking to you, so I don't have a lot of time. But we are doing online classes, and we're doing remote. You know, uh, you know, you can sign up and watch the, what we're doing uh, if, if you want. Or the YouTube classes are still ongoing, but we're not doing ad live. You know, with more than one person classes. No, not at this point. We're we're so busy. We, we are just inundated with uh, work. Custom work keeps uh, rolling in. We're we're blessed that we have all this work, but. Um, if you want to give me a call in probably about a month to see where I'm at, would you would you do that? Okay. Great. Let me uh, give me a call back. Um, but I'm kind of I'm in the middle of a couple of things right now. That would be great, Katina. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. So um, that was a person who um, actually was asking if I was going to be doing any more classes. Um, I'm doing classes for all you guys, um, <laughs> you know that it's difficult. I mean, even the public schools around here, Patrick, it was the last we heard. Are they not opening? Are they opening? I they're opening. I don't even know. Uh, all I know is I'm glad I'm not going to school right now. It's just tough. It's a tough situation. And, you know, most of the clients, that I, most of the students I noticed were, you know, my age and a little older, The on average, maybe about 60, 62, 65. So, you know, that's the age group I think that's a little bit more concerned. So uh, I think for now, as you heard, I'm just going to kind of put them on hold. Um, we're blessed that we have enough work. And we started the online classes, Patrick. I mean, we really started 10 years ago on the YouTube, really. So, and then on the online classes, how old are those, Patrick? Maybe two years? Over a year, I like, guess. Yeah. Over a year. So it was well before the pandemic set in. So it was, I guess in that in that regard, it was good timing. But we got a lot to cover, so I'm going to get right into this. And I wanted a special shout out to Anil from India. I am going to answer. You sent me a, a very uh, broad range of questions, uh, and and um, I'm going to try to focus you now. With uh, if I, I I'm sure I'll have time, and I have a special setup for you, especially. But I know other people are going to be really interested in Anil's questions. But first, we're going to get to Rebecca. Do we have any other business first, Patrick? Just, uh, sorry about yesterday. Yeah, you know, yesterday we had some technical difficulties. I think our track record is pretty good. I would think maybe one or tw once or twice we've had to cancel, right, Patrick? Yeah, usually I post a uh, notice too, like last week. This was a this was almost a last minute malfunction. So the computer uh, crashed. Computer crashed. So <laughs> we're very lucky that we haven't had more of those. I think. Luckily, we had a backup computer. Yeah. So thank you for uh, your patience yesterday, and thank you for tuning in today. 
So I'm going to get, jump right into Rebecca's question. As usual, a question and answers um, are welcome, and usually we, we break away for anything live, so just to let you know. But Rebecca is taking our class. She's taking, I'll, let, I'll just read this. She says she's new, and I need to apologize in advance for the number of questions I'm going to be asking in the upcoming days, which is understandable. So the way we originally set up the question and answer was for exactly uh, this, 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 these questions that Rebecca, somebody that's taken the class, and that um, this is exactly why we have the question and answer. So I'm glad, and we don't, we're not getting a huge amount of these, which tells me, I think that the classes are doing uh, this self-explanatory perhaps, but for a very new person like Rebecca, this is what we're here for. So she said, I started Jimmy's Antiques, Arts and Crafts. You saw Jimmy in the introduction in his famously crafted words of, what did he say, really? <laughs> I'm doing a similar chair, but wondering what I should do for the padding. I'll, I'll, mo I'll most p post pictures of what I found when I took the chair apart. This chair has been recovered at least once and appeared the original cotton, and I'm guessing it's straw. The person who covered it just added a few hunks of regular polyfill, not, not a good idea, to fill out the corners and edges. Well, the corners maybe not so bad. Do I want to keep any of this original cotton or straw? The answer is I never reuse straw. You're going to have to replace it. Straw, straw. I mean, one of the few organic materials I don't reuse. It just breaks down, and you end up with, you know, mostly, mostly, most of your straw is probably gone. Believe it or not, turned to powder. So you can't reuse that. And the cotton is no good because the straw sticks to the cotton and it's messy. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what you need. The straw. She says the straw looks pretty good, but it. It really isn't. Just not sure if it's still okay to use. I wouldn't. Also, is this po is this is there possibly another YouTube video that involves a seat with zigzag springs? There might be. I'm not sure. We have so many. I, I forget how many we've done. Um, she says thanks for helping a novice out. I'm just going to tell you, Rebecca. Um, if you can get your own source of supplies, that's fine. But I, I will tell you that you need you need a few things. You need for this chair. You need burlap. You need a small edge roll. You need at least one sheet. You need one sheet of two-inch foam, one sheet of one-inch foam. You need webbing, and you need some type of batting, depending on the fabric. If you're doing a lightweight fabric, Daycron bonded Daycron would be good. If you're doing a heavy fabric, a roll of AAA cotton. In any case, um, Broadway Upholstery School has what you need. You go to that and get get the supply kit. I think as a beginner, you're going to have to start somewhere. You're going to it'll get you familiar with supplies. Um, there's more than what you need in that, but I think um, I think it's a good introduction kit, and it has I think it has everything that you need. So check that out. And if you don't find anything you need in the kit, the supply kit, you can definitely order single items, right, Pat? Yeah. So so if you're running out of something, you can order. Hopefully, you'll be a custom, a client of ours through the Broadway Upholstery School. We would appreciate that. So those, those are hand-picked, the supplies are hand-picked just for you, just for people just starting out and also people in the journeyman um, area of their, of their career. It's, it's selected, it's the right material, you'd be surprised how, how you can get really caught in the wrong materials. So I think that's the best answer for Rebecca. I'm going to read her email, she sent another email here. Oh, this is the same one, Patrick? I think there may be a follow-up. That had a different picture in it. All right, she says, uh, thanks so much for enrolling. Well, you said that. Okay, I'm doing an arts and crafts chair class, and back of my chair is a tricky spot. Looks like she's already got the burlap on. Good. When I, She had burlap. When I took it apart, it just had pieces of regular fiber fill stuck in this little offset area she, she's showing me. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. I, she says, I've considered, this is a good question actually, you guys, this is one of those problem solving things, right? So do you have a picture of that up there, Patrick, or no? No, I don't have that one. I'm going to bring this over to um, kind of small. We have a question for us live. Well, uh, Pam said that uh, she just sent in a question about how to determine the number of springs for a chair. And I got that right here. Did. Okay, good, Pam. Yeah, I'll, I'll, that's a good question, too. I, and I heard you met Pam. Is that who yeah, you Pam, yeah, well, Pam had taken my class, Patrick. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, when, I, when I look over how many people I've taught, and I apologize to Pam when, when I told her, I just don't remember. Or isn't, that, isn't that crazy? I'm not good with faces, actually. But when I look at how many people, I, I think the number is about 2,000, or over 2,000 people in, in my career to teaching. So um, 
I guess I guess one or two slip by. She, I know she's a quiet person, and that's why I don't remember. I don't, I remember the ones that are quiet. I guess like, like Jimmy, she, <laughs> like Jimmy, right? <laughs> so if you want me to remember, you act like Jimmy. <laughs> I'm gonna hold this one up though um, to the camera. I don't know how well that she can get this, that Michaela can get this, but this is the picture. See the arrow? So what she has there. She has um, the frame maker didn't really help her. Sometimes the upholsters uh, they don't help upholsters very much. So she needs to fill that in. The last time they filled it in with some type of batting. I don't. I don't. I don't suggest that you do that. I'm not a big. What she should do is take a piece of the webbing, that seat webbing, and stretch it right over that halfway on this side, halfway on this side, right. She should staple this side down, but before she staples the other side down, she should take cotton. Not, not, uh, Daycron's not really good for this. Cotton has the oomph that you need. And she's going to, with this flap that's over here, she's going to just tuck in the cotton, and then she's going to staple that down. So what she's going to develop is a nicer transition rather than, because if she doesn't take care of this, it's going to come right up to the surface, right up through the fabric. Does that make sense, you guys? This is an excellent question. So, um, and and it's different from Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't have this problem. So you guys are going to run into that. Pam is getting really good. Uh, speaking of Pam, we're going to get to her in a minute. She's getting really good at problem solving, and and that's what you need to be. You need to be a good problem. So I guess that's true with all walks of life, right? But especially it seems like upholstery. So, the last person on that. Getting back to that had not a great solution because when you put just the batting in there, the Daycron batting, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the uh, support and so that will have a, the effect, it's like having nothing really. The webbing is a good solution. So I hope that There's one other one there too that I put. So. The, 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 there's another one. Yeah. No, the, the other sheet. I have that that's first in, in order on the computer. Oh, okay. Do you want me to read that now? Oh, uh, shit, it was the same one, yeah. I don't know, I don't see it, unless it's really stuck together, Patrick. It's, it's there, it's on the, it's on the table. <laughs> Is that the other one? It's not in this. It's like him. Him? I don't see it. If it's stuck, it might be stuck to this. No, nope. I, I put it in the pile. It's, you know, here it goes at the bottom. Alright, so you want me to read that next? Yeah, because that's what happens in the water on the computer here. So, Kim, how you doing, Kim? Is she, is she new? Yeah, she, just, she, she posted that last week, but we didn't have a Q&A last yeah, week. Yeah, so. sorry, Hopefully, forgive us too yeah. for, that, for that. Usually we're not this long in, in answering back. Uh, but we'd love to answer in the question and answer, and, and you'll see why with, uh, with, the, with Anil's questions, why it's better just, sometimes it's just more visual. You know, I can't, um, Anil is asking questions that we have a video, I'll get to that in a minute, that, that's over an hour, it's like an hour and a half long, that kind of answers his question, and uh, you know, can imagine, that's a book, <laughs> which, which we have a book associated with that too, right Patrick? Yep. There is a book, we wrote a book about it, and Anil, I'll tell you in a minute how you can get that. Um, so, Kim says, thank you so much for adding me, this is, she's added to the Facebook, uh, you know, Broadway Poultry School Facebook. And we have how many members now, Pat? Over 100. That's really, you know, really working out well. We, we love that. Me and my best friend are working on a sofa we picked up. We found some interesting stuff in the inside, and we don't really know if it's supposed to be there. <laughs> I want to tell you about some of the things that I found. I don't want to get off track here, because we've got a lot of work to do. It, it, I just laugh at that, because we do find some unusual things inside sofas. It kind of looks like cardboard and tire strips. <laughs> I have actually found uh, tire strips in, in some furniture, believe it or not. Uh, not a good idea to use in upholstery. We plan on using webbing and we want to do tufting on the back pieces. So, so we also have a split in the wood too, which is fine. You just need to get a clamp and a glue and, and do that part of it. But she's asking me. Oh, I think she's just informing us of this, right, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is really interesting. I love stuff like this. Please send in. We should have a segment on what what is the most Pages unusual. Of upholstery. I don't know. What's the most unusual thing you found on a sofa or a chair? That yeah. that would be kind of nice. You right? found an egg in Michelle's. Uh, remember that? Well, we found a mouse. And a mouse too. Uh, if you guys want to laugh at me, <laughs> speaking of being laughed at, um, 
Michelle was doing her show online class and there was a it looked real man it, uh, she had a, a mouse this long with a big long ugly tail and I pulled it and I jumped I mean I, I thought it was a real mouse <laughs> you want to see more of that please enroll in the tub chair oh yeah it's the tub <laughs> chair that it's the tub chair it's like one of her kids put it in there I think. but uh, that was a good class <clears throat> so I think that's it on that now you can do panda just got her up here, so. Pam's always asking great questions. Um, how do I determine how many springs I need for this chair? So let's start first with, here's a good way of, of looking at it, right? You don't want the springs so close that they click on one another, right? And you don't want them so close that you can't get two good knots in between. Does that make sense? I don't have a spring up here. Um, it's just such a, um, I'm going to represent a top of a spring with with the with the tape, right? With the tape. So and this that's good. That's about the size of a. Uh, by the way, I think you should put number one, no more than number two springs in that too. By the way. So I'm just gonna hold this up. There you go. Oh, that, look at that. Was I hey you guys? Do I have an eye or what? That's perfect. Look at that, Michaela. Michaela, take take a shot at that. Look at that tape roll and look at the spring. It's, it's exactly the same size as the head of the spring. I'm not so bad. All right, but I need two of them though, Patrick. So good idea, let's get rid of that. So, um, so you probably want at least an inch distance from one another, at least, maybe an inch and a half. So that should set you up to, that should just do the, do the math from there. And you don't want them too close to the edge of the wood. You want them about that far away. At the closest, I would say about three quarters of an inch. So if you get to a point where you think you need an extra one and you have to fit it in by coming a little closer, keep in mind though, you get too close, right? It's hard to get your knots, okay? Because you, you know, as you know, you guys, I know Pam's done this. You, you put a knot here and you put a knot here. So you can't have them too close, so, okay? I think that answers it. Um, I think you should do a Nils first before you do the YouTube questions. Yeah, let's get to Nil. Yeah. yeah, let's get to Nil because uh, I'm going to uh, answer a Nil in two ways. Okay, so you guys, here's, here's his chair over here. You know, when I first looked at this chair, I think it just needs cushions because it has such a beautiful, uh, this looks like a beautiful slat system, right? I know that he's looking for comfort, but then as I'm reading through his emails, it sounds also like that he might want to actually upholster this, which presents some problems, but I want to talk about that. Let's go for the easy one first. So if he's doing just cushions, he can do a seat, he needs a seat cushion, right? And he needs a back cushion. So some of the things I have to guess at is the scale on this. So I'm looking at this chair. I don't think the depth and the width and the height, I wouldn't call this a very large chair at all. So to me, uh, Anel, you need a three inch, I like a boxed cushion. This is a seat, three inch boxed seat cushion with piping, okay? You can go on our YouTube channel, and this goes for people who are taking the online classes too. There's so many on there. You guys go through the library. I'm sure you're going to find um, us directly addressing things like how to cut piping or how to make a cushion, for instance. Um, and also, didn't Bernice do a cushion, Patrick? Yes. Yeah, on hers, yeah. And she did one for Jimmy, I think, too. If you, she's she, special guest in Jimmy's class. Jimmy, she, she was at what class was that? Do you remember? Here's the other. I know it's not to go with that. Yeah, it's the same. Well, let's let's put this up too. Let's talk about it. Okay, because then this this presents a problem a problem too with the, just the cushions. So. This is what I would do, and it was probably going no no I'm, I want to upholster it, but I'm doing this for other people's benefit too. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to get to the question of can we upholster these, which is a little trickier. We got getting rid of the easy stuff first. Okay, so three inch seat box seat with piping on that's the seat and on the bed. Um, you could take your, your tape measure and measure up three and a half inches and then draw, I say three and a half because you're going to use a three inch filling. He's going to, he wants to know about filling too. He wants to know a lot. I know you have a very inquisitive mind. Uh, he wants three inch ultra foam, which he can get on the Broadway upholstery school site, ultra foam. 
and that's a medium with Dacron, okay? That's going to come out to about three and a half inches. So he's going to take, see, and his measurements in here are going to be, I would, if I were doing it, I would be out at the outer edges of, of this right in here, outer edges. And the seat, you want to go all the way back, the seat cushion, and the back cushion rests on top. Okay, now on the back cushion, I'm going to say two inch boxed with Dacron, okay, box with uh, welts, right? And two inch ultra foam with Dacron. And he's gonna, on the, on the back cushion, um, the back cushion is gonna come about three and a half inches off here, all the way up. And he has a choice up at the top where he wants to finish this. And this is up to you, Anel. You can even finish it right here. I'm going to draw on this. You can finish it right here to see the wood, or you can finish it up top to not see the wood up top. But you have to come to the arm here and the arm here. That's it. It's very much like a mid-century uh, piece of furniture that just has cushions. It's almost exactly like that, although this is, far, this is more arts and crafts. So that's it on that. <clears throat> oh, and I just want to mention on his, on his sofa, you have a choice of um, cushioning. On this one here, it's a seat in the back. On the sofa, it could be, you, 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 you have a choice. You could do three, right? One, two, three. Three and three to have a total of six cushions, fashioning it like this. You can have two. You can have two cushions. And then two, whatever you do on here, I believe you should do the same up top. You know, so if you have two cushions here, you should have two up at the top. Except if you want to put one cushion, if you want to just do a bench cushion all the way across, one cushion all the way across, same foam you need, right? And on the back, you could do three. I would do three on the back if you do one here. Does that make sense? So, Anil, you're, you're into a lot of designing. You know, there's a lot of designing that has, has to happen here. Um, I think that's all I have to talk about that. Now, I couldn't really, um, if you wanted to upholster these. So let's say, let's say, you know, for some reason uh, you don't like the slats and you don't like loose cushions and you actually want to upholster this. It does present some problems. Um, the first problem are the slats, right? So the very first thing you need to do is cover the holes that are in here. So you could do that with a piece of burlap. It's very simple. Just cover it with burlap. Um, the other problem that you have is you really can't put springs in this chair. You're going to have to pad it out with filling. Okay, and the problem with, with that, I'm going to just go through what I, would, what I would attempt to do on this. It's not something that I like to do because I know instinctively when you're starting with the wood base, instead of the webbing at least. Believe it or not, webbing has a certain bounce to it, right? I would rather see you starting on the seat with the webbing, but let's, let's say you're not going to do that. Let's just say you're going you're gonna to do the burlap. And then you need to pretty much, um, I assume that he's not covering the arms. That would be too much. What he's going to do is he's probably going to upholster the seat and upholster the back. No loose cushions. That's what I'm thinking he's doing. So he's going to make this look like a Martha Washington chair. I mean, it's nothing like a Martha Washington chair, but it would have the same amount of upholstery as a Martha Washington chair. Um, so look up Google Martha Washington chair, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's an upholstered seat and an upholstered back. So the way he has to do this is he has to start with the burlap, uh, we'll talk about the seat first. And then on the seat, he's going to have to build out a crown on it. Because you want a crown seat, I don't think he wants a box seat on this. Um, although, <laughs> he could do a box seat if he wants. The difference is, let's do the crown seat first. It's both going to start off with the burlap. So let's say a crown, he's going to crown it. You see how many, uh, this is a real can of worms, really. So if he's going to crown it, um, I. I visualize maybe a two inch piece of foam. That's the last thing you're going to do, but let's just start with the first thing. In here, he's going to do like an oval shape, one inch piece of foam. 
And what he's going to do is he's going to take a pair of scissors. He can't just, you just can't put, or you just can't cut an oval piece. Let's say you cut it like this, right? It has that edge. What I want you to do now is to bevel the edge like this all the way around. Okay, so, so you can see that's the first thing of the crown seat that you're doing. So what you're trying to do with the, with the crown seat that you're making with foam is you're trying to duplicate what Pam is going to be having on her sprung seat. Pam's making a sprung seat that her desired look is a crown on that. That's your desired look. So that's what you're trying to do with this, even this very first piece of uh, foam rubber. Okay, then over that you could take a piece of loose Daycron or cotton, it doesn't matter, just over that, another oval shape, right? And then try your two inch foam over that to see what it looks like. So your two inch foam, I, I don't think you want to go any thicker than this, I really don't. Um, I see, I'm nowhere knowing too what the seat height is, I know that he sent the seat height and everything. But you know, you could even probably do a three inch piece of foam. So a three inch piece of foam, you're going to have to attach that foam. And now you're committed, I should tell you, Arnell, you're committed to stapling into this wood frame. Okay? So you're going to be stapling. What you want to do with the three inch piece of foam is you take it, let me show you on a four inch piece that I have here. This is four. So you're going to take your two thumbs and you're going to, you, you, let's say you're doing the back edge. You're going to fold the fold the bottom in and then just get pinched about an inch of the foam and then you're going to have to start stapling that foam all the way around right and then after that sometimes if the foam isn't cooperating or if the staples are pulling through you're going to take some tack tape some uh, cardboard tack tape and just put that in staple that in because that will prevent the foam from undoing does this make sense this is a, a big project you're undertaking now, okay? So after that, you could take a piece of bonded Dacron and cover the whole thing with that, okay? I assume he wants to cover the whole, all this wood here, too. It's probably going to come underneath. And then it's pretty much the same on the back, except that you're probably going to go, so the crown has a one-inch oval and beveled piece and then over that he's got let's say cotton an oval cotton that goes over that then over that three inch foam over that and then over that day growing that's the seat that's the seat okay and then the back the back um, so there's another problem that's presented with the back um, where to pull it through. So you're going to have this upholstered here. There's no place to pull this through. So that's, inter that's an interesting problem right here on the bottom. So you, you have to anticipate this. How do you pull your fabric through? Right? So this is a, this is a pretty big problem here. Um, let's just see how we're going to do this. Okay. So how we're going to overcome that is with, <laughs> this is interesting. So the very first thing he has to do on his inside back is he has to put his fabric on before he does any filling. And his fabric's going to be blind tack. I bet Pam knows what I'm talking about here. Pam, right? He's going to have to blind tack the inside back down here. So, it'll, so he'll have his seat upholstered. It'll look beautiful, I'm sure, now. He'll have to send us pictures. And the fabric's going to be reversed this way. And he's going to take a piece, he's going to staple that. And then he's going to take a piece of cardboard tack tape and staple that down. And so when, so there's no padding in here right now. So when he pulls this up, he's got a nice fresh edge down there. Does that make sense? So he's going to pull it back down. And then on the back, he's going to put a two inch, uh, he needs the burlap on the back, right? The burlap's very important because, you know, if you don't cover these holes, uh, it'll, it'll just come through the to all the way to the top the, the, as a hole, as a, as kind of like, um, you know, you'll see, you'll see all this. It'll, it'll come in the form of like a bubble or something, you know. That this will bubble out and this will be indented. Does that make sense? Just trust me, you need the burlap. And only burlap. Burlap is the best thing for that. And then he's going to take the burlap and then he's going to take a, let's say, a two-inch piece of foam. You do not have to crown the back. Do not crown the back. Uh, back is, is flatter. Uh, you don't want a crown. It's totally different than the seat. And then he's going to take the Daycron. 
and then he's got to find a way of stapling. You can either staple on the front here or carry it. Um, I would suggest to staple it on the front and then to finish it off with some type of double piping, right? So this is the best answer I have for you now. We spent some time and I hope that that, um, if you want, you can follow up with some more questions, but I'm going to sit down now and get, get to some more business. But um, I think too, I, I wanted to mention one thing to, uh, I know. I think the best source is the um, is BroadwayUpholsterySchool.com. I think you can get a kit on there. I would recommend him to get because he's got so many questions about supplies too. When we're doing the kit, right, the the, the stool kit, right, Patrick, he gets the video. Yeah. He gets the book, which yeah. is really important because we're all different types of learners. I think. So, so you get the visual, you get the book, right? You get all the essential supplies. And you get the, you get the three-dimensional stuff. You get everything. You get the ottoman frame if he wants to use that to practice. And you get the that. frame. And it, what the, the good thing about that is it takes you through each material. In the beginning, it, we show you the, the different uses of the material, what they are, what they're called. And then, of course, how to put them on. How to put them on two different ways. How to put them on with hand tacks and also staple guns. So... I think it's good value too. I think it's a good educational tool. So let's get to some of these questions on um, what says YouTube. Uh, yeah, Patrick. so the YouTube comments and questions. Upgrading store bought furniture. Somebody just liked that. They just said C. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, the letter C. What does that mean, Patrick? No idea. That's <laughs> code. That's code for what a wonderful guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Patrick, uh, we have fun, don't we? Uh, yes, we do. Just like we, when we were making that video. <laughs> so the next one is um, Janine. This is about a machine stitched, machine stitched um, pleats. That's what that was. Um, that's a short little video, but I think very informative. I, I should mention. I don't think I mentioned that the on this seat. So this what this was was a full leather very high-end piece of furniture that they had that was done in a fabric and that they had hand pleated it but they pulled the pleat to the side and it was wood covering so that you didn't see a pleat but the problem with that is with the full leather it, it, it wasn't going to work with the full leather um, so what we needed to do on this is to actually cut out tailor make the pleats and then stitch each pleat down and I show you how to do that. So Janine's commenting on this. She said, great information. Thank you. It will look much neater and more professional. And the other reason that we had to do that is because it was a very tight fit. It fits within the frame. You've got to be careful with these type of things, you guys. Where some seats fit within the frame and you can't have too much padding over or sometimes even getting a thicker material can be a hindrance to you when you try to fit it back in. So be aware of that. I've actually had to, on some of these, uh, I've actually had to you know, plane down the wood you know, on, on the seat, on the upholstered seat portion to, to get it to fit. So um, some of these really do fit tight and that was one of them. Um, waterfall skirt tips. Um, do you, this is from 55 Big Yin. <coughs> do you like, or do you line the outside back and the outside arm with calico before you put the fabric on. I hope you un understand my question. Yeah, I oftentimes the only thing I line, um, the whole thing is lined on a waterfall skirt. That's the answer to your question. It's lined in muslin, the whole thing. That's that's the only way you can get it to work. <coughs> so, so when I cut my, let's say my, I'm cutting my outside arm and it actually measures. Let's let's put it up here. Actually, this is a good question. I'm going to erase a nil. The question is about waterfall skirts, which in the 90s everybody was going crazy with these. Everybody was doing them. And now, uh, not so much. I don't know, what did I do with my pen? So let's say this is the outside arm. This is, these are the legs. It's just that's club chair, right? It's a club chair. And let's say, let's say, so this is the outside arm, uh, OA. Okay. So what a waterfall skirt does 
is it, it comes down, it's not a separate skirt, it's, it's, it's almost like a slip cover and upholstery, it's, it's kind of a hybrid, right? So um, what I usually do is um, I measure this way first, I measure, right? It's going to come to about an inch from the floor, but I make sure that I cut this three inches oversized. Okay, and I also on the on the ends you have to cut it six inches oversized. Six inches. That's what I do oversized, right? You'll see why in a minute. Very important. If you cut it three inches, it's not gonna look that great. You won't have enough. So let's say this piece after I do all my measurements is let's say it's thirty by thirty. Let's just say that's the actual measurement, right? Up and down, side to side. So my thirty here is 33 and 36. That's what I cut my fabric, okay? Guess what? I'm going to cut my muslin the same way. Same, same size, unlike regular skirts if you've seen my videos. So, so you have your fabric, right? And then your muslin. I, I line the whole thing. The whole thing's line. That's the answer to your question. It's 33 by 36, right? So then what I do, my, my, I lay my fabric down after, the, after it's cut, I take my muslin's cut, and I put it face to face, and I sew the bottom, right? I sew the bottom. And then I go to my sewing machine, and then I flip up the ends so that, uh, and sew them. Now I'm still backwards on the sewing machine, right? I sew them, and then I reverse it, and so I, what I have is a nice pocket, really, that doesn't have any seams showing. That's what I end up with. And it's oversized, so putting it on. Now, what was the name of that video, Patrick? That, that how to put a, a waterfall skirt? That was, yeah, that was a while back. So go to the video and see what I did. I mean, the reason you cut it three, six inches is so that you have a good three inches here to fold under. And then the, what, what distinguishes it from a straight skirt is that instead of being close to the bottom, and let's say this is eight inches, the, the waterfall skirt comes down as, as much as possible. I say that because you're dictated by the seat on where this has to where this opens, but it's usually way further than eight inches. Let's say it's eleven inches. So you upholster this with your your regular tools that you have, your, your ply grip and everything, and you, you use the muslin too. I, I line the whole thing, and then the break starts. This is a this is a this point here is a little scary for most people because you have to cut you have to cut through the fabric and the muslin and definitely you want to cut this way not this way right this way the video shows you that you come down this way and then you flap under your at your your your, your piece and then it, it it really falls nice as long as you you with your ply grip stops right here and you get a nice sense of how to use ply grip and it just pleats all the way to the floor and usually you want to put a pocket underneath that before you before you do this. But um, we used to do a lot of those. Uh, what happens though when you it, it gets a little complicated sometimes with the spring edge, with the spring edge, and, and there's ways of doing that. You can do it, but I don't usually recommend a, a waterfall skirt on a spring edge because you're sitting down and the skirt's hitting the floor when you you know the, the, the springs are recoiling, right? So I hope that answers your question. That's wow, you guys are really asking some good ones here and uh, anytime you have another question feel free so we're at now um, waterfall skirts the upholstery show this was from Janine I wanted to thank a shout out to Janine Patrick for being so supportive yeah I think she missed us yesterday hopefully she didn't hopefully yeah. uh, she didn't stay up for that I hope not bad, yeah. I hope that we didn't mess her up too much uh, she says th this is about um, Thank you for clarifying the differences between four and eight-way tie springs using nylon tufting twine and ruby jute twine, respectfully, for back versus seat springs. Another great question and answer. Thank you. Yeah, who would have known? If you use the heavier twine on the back springs, it actually affects, and then knot it up, because it's a lighter treatment, it actually affects the way it works and the way it looks, ultimately. So you go with that lighter twine on the back springs. And I think the way I explained that, Patrick, was that most of the weight, most of your body weight is on the seat springs. So you need the heavier, heavier treatment on the seat springs. Back springs, you don't even think about it. Um, you're just leaning back. How much, how much pound, how many pounds is that per square inch? I don't think it's much at all. 
So that's why you don't have to go as crazy. And, and I, it, that Furniture Salvation shows that very well. As a matter of fact, can we show that sofa now, Patrick, live? Well, the last video is coming up. We'll just say this. Oh, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't yeah, show we'll it? Yeah, it's coming up. We'll right. say that. It's done. <laughs> it looks awesome. So we're done with the Chippendale. The Chippendale really came out beautiful, you guys. And that's going to be up for sale. Uh, I think it's a great price. I think I might want to take it myself, though. My son's going to have to pry it from my grip because I really do like the way it came out. And you guys voted on the color, and I think the color looks great. It's something I didn't think of. The color looks great with the nails, the, the French natural nails. Yeah, uh, I think it was uh, Kevin, Kevin Eaton. Yeah. One of our, he suggested, he pointed that out. He pointed out the nails? Yeah, and it would, they would go good with that blow. Is he watching right now? I'm not sure, but I know he's commented on a lot of our stuff in the past. But he yeah, he's, Kevin's got a good eye. Um, I noticed that I, some of the other questions that he's asked. And what a, what it's, I didn't even know, I didn't even, it didn't even register with me on these. Um, but the nails are important, an important element. It's, it really makes the, the sofa pop. <clears throat> Oh, we had, uh, I should mention, Patrick, we had the local cable station in here, yes, uh, yes, was it yesterday or the day before? Wednesday. Wednesday. We had a local cable, in, I don't know about, for all you, all our friends who are not in the United States, but here in the United States, every community, believe it or not, has their own community access station, every community, and that comes equipped with a, a, a beautiful studio, cutting edge equipment and studio and everything. And this is sponsored by the cable companies. I guess, to be clear, Patrick, it's any community with the cable company, right? Right. And it's been mandated, the government mandated this, otherwise they wouldn't, they wouldn't have done this. But it's mandated uh, that if a cable company was to come in, that you, they needed to provide community access to um, the community. And we've done, Patrick and I, in the very beginning, even before we did the YouTube, uh, we, we, we went to one of these training seminars. Do you remember that, Patrick? Yeah, the Wicked Local. Uh, no, I'm talking about the community cable TV. Oh, well, uh, barely. New, uh, yeah. That, you were very young when we did that. Yeah. But it was very interesting. I mean, I, you, you wouldn't believe the equipment that they have. And they have to maintain the equipment. They have to buy new equipment. It's part of the deal, right? But they came in, I, you know, I never was shy away from free advertising, guys, you know, and I, I, this is for people who, are, I guess the shout out would be to people who want to start their own upholstery shop or own business or whatever the business might be. It, we can't, though, part of the deal is you really can't actively advertise, right, Patrick? Because right. it's, it's a supposedly a non-profit, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but, but, you know, they have to say who we are. We're upholstery on Broadway here in Arlington, Massachusetts, so... Um, I think um, never pass up an opportunity, right, guys? So when they called, we said, "Sure, come on in." You know. <clears throat> so now we got Lynn, and she's talking about a fixed button, uh, fixing a pop button for free. This was a YouTube video that I think got a lot of response, didn't it, Patrick? Yeah, that's probably. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, what I did with that, now you guys, um, it sounds like I'm shamelessly plugging my Broadway upholstery, uh, Broadway upholstery school, but I really, I'm really not. But we have available a kit with the German needle, a, a professional kit that fixes buttons. But with this, we did two of these videos. I'm not sure which one she's referring to. One was with the German needle and the clasps, good pair of scissors and the nylon, you know, twine. We did another one where I, I, I kind of invented a way of doing it um, without using any specialized equipment. And it had to do with the needle. We, we take a needle nose ply. It's a very thin needle nose ply. It only works on a heavier fabric. It probably wouldn't work on a lightweight fabric because you might rip it. But very thin needle nose. And we, we, we thread a twine through a washer, a very small washer. And then we take the, the needle and we run it, the needle nose, through. Or, or a pair of tweezers, a long pair of tweezers would be good too. We push it through and we, we try to get the washer through as much of the material in the sofa as you can, right? You're going through the front of the sofa, right? The front, the front. And then you kind of let the tweezers go, pull the tweezers out, and, and you, you hopefully the twine's there, because it, 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 it's a long twine. But you're hoping that the washer kind of falls in in the back of the material. So then you take both twines. When you pull it to take both twines, that's the moment of truth, because you want to feel resistance when you when you do that. So you pull and you, and you have resistance, right? 
and then you put your button in one side once you have that you put the button in one side of the twine and then you make your slip knot which we've we have a, a video on slip knots patrick how to make slip knots yes so you can find that out and then you've just did a repair that an upholsterer might charge you a couple hundred dollars for that's why it's probably popular patrick because <laughs> people save money right yes so I'm not saying that that's uh, going to work with every fabric, though. I mean, the professional, professional tools are always better. You guys know that. All right. So now we've got um, no live show this week, but somebody commented on that. Yeah, just that somebody said that's all right. <laughs> no, they said, no worries. I'm still watching previous shows. So that's great. The reruns are always fun, aren't they, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, that's why I was telling Anil that these are always going to be up, so you always go back and watch your explanation. And I know I went fast through that explanation for him, too. But if you want to, I'm going to send the link right now to the kit, with the book, because the book, he's talking about the terminology. Yeah. That's why he wants it written down. Yeah. So I'm going to refer the, the link right now. Do we have just the book off it, Patrick? Uh, no, we didn't do that because right. we didn't have the physical books, right. remember? That's we have them, but we, no, I mean, uh, we, we, could, we put them now. You get the digital form. When yeah, you, you can get the digital. He doesn't want the supplies. He can always get the digital, and I'm sending both to him. Well, how much is the digital? I'm just 100. So you can just get the digital. You don't yeah. have to get all the other stuff. No, he just wants the terminology yeah. and the video. Yep. Um, you know, we're trying to make it, you, you guys, really, I, I, we're trying to make it as easy and painless as possible, right? and um, as less costly as possible. So we'll make suggestions like that. You know, he doesn't, uh, you know, start with the digital form and then maybe, you know, work his, self, self, work his way into the other stuff, right? Um, do we have any other questions right, right now? Mm -hmm. So then we got the upholstery show, a comment from the Texas Mickey. If we don't have a clinch it and tool yet, what is the second best way to secure springs to jute webbing? <clears throat> I think the best way would be uh, to take um, lengths of about 16 to 18 inches long of nylon. It has to be the nylon twine, tufting, tufting twine. Can't be cotton. It can't be something that you can pull. It can't be something that you can pull and it breaks. It can't break. And it has to be something that has a wax coating on it. That's why that tufting twine, again, Broadway Upholstery School, has the, you can buy just the tufting twine, Patrick, I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's in the supply section. <clears throat> so you can take about an 18 inch section, and then you do need the needle kit, which isn't that expensive. It has the needles, and you do need needles. And you thread a button needle. It's a button needle that we use. And this is on, I'm not sure if we feature this on a YouTube video, but I know it's in the kit. Um, we show you how to do that on the kit and we also show you how to use the clinch it. So there's two th ways we show you. So let me just ex explain it. So you know what, let me just, it's always, the visual is always better, right guys? <clears throat> I just happen to have everything in hands in view. Yeah. So you're going to take a piece about 18 inches long I'm going to thread one side of it with the button needle through the eye. And then, look at I even have my webbing here. I swear I didn't set this up, you guys. This happens to be out. And then we go through one side, right? and go through the other side. Now, I get comments from uh, seasoned professional upholsters and they say to me, why don't you just take a curved needle and just and, and do it that way? I don't like that, I never like that way. I've been shown that way before, but um, I think that, that way there you have one twine all the way around that goes in and out, in and out, and it's easy to do, and then you just tie off the ends. But if it breaks, the whole thing breaks. I think my way, you're going to do three of these, by the way. You're going to do one, two, and three. But then the key is the slip knot. So you need to know how to do a slip knot. So I'm going to do a slip knot here live. I hope I don't flub this up. We have a question. 
This is from Sylvia. Well, hey, hi, hey, Sylvia. Well, there's one. Anil wants to know about um, cheaper fabric. He asked that first. So, I'm gonna make sure I that. so there's my slip knot. It's really tight, and make sure you just knot it off again, and then cut it about an inch away, and then you do three of those all the way around. That's the answer to. That was, um, who was that, Patrick? That was a YouTube comment. Texas yeah. uh, Mickey. Okay, so I'm glad I actually, we did a mini YouTube video right there on, on live TV, Patrick. Nice. How about that, huh? We're daring here at Upholstery on Broadway. The next thing we're going to do is extreme, uh, extreme upholstery, right, Patrick? Not that again. <laughs> no, no, we won't go into that. We got a question. Um, this is from Anil. Hi, Anil. Uh, wanted to know more about fabric. Would like to know about other brands of fabric other than Sunbrella as it costs high. Yeah, um, fabrics is such another loaded question. Is that we could we have a fabric video though, don't we, Patrick? Yeah, we do actually. So Anil, you you should you should take advantage of the library we have online free. It's free, and we did a one at least one. Uh, we did Pamela did one too on yeah, that. Yeah, she does. She does. Pam, we got two up there at least. Yeah. We have at least two videos on fabric, and I know that we probably could have ten. Um, especially with this question, so um, you know, I'll tell you. And now, sometimes price doesn't always determine a um, quality fabric. Does that make sense? Or a fabric that's good to use in upholstery. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, it's not the case. Um, so what I try to find in a in a fabric in a fiber is a 50% cotton and a 50% synthetic mix. Now that's a very selfish um, explanation is that it, it just seems to have better stretch and I'm always looking for a fabric that stretches good. But it depends on what you're doing. So that's for like regular furniture but if you're doing let's say a mid-century knoll chair, womb chair, you guys look that up, W-O-M-B, womb chair, and you'll see it has so many curves the only fabric you can use on that is a wool. Because why? why? Because a wool stretches every way and very very much so and when you look at that chair you'll know why so you really have to use common sense when you're when you're picking a fabric so of course if you're manufacturing you're, you're trying to save money and there's ways of cutting fabric that's that doesn't use a lot of fabric on furniture too that's a whole nother subject but as far as f fabric fiber content um, I kind of like a woven fabric I kind of like linen linen's kind of nice to use uh, uh, so you have to you have to uh, kind of use your common sense and 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 where's it going? What's it? What's the use? That's also very important. And we have another question. This from Sylvia. Hey Sylvia. Is the twine for tying tying the springs on the back of a chair different from the twine used for the seat? Yep, the backs we 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 feature this in that in the furniture salvation piece that we're going to be having for sale. You can see me doing uh, back springs. And I think, did we do the seat springs? I can't even remember, it's been so long. Um, but the back springs get this nylon tufting twine, which we have available. And the seat is definitely the jute twine. And they both have features. They both have very unique features, only to upholstery. Okay, and one of the, the both, what they both have in common is they have a wax coating. They have a wax coating so that when you make a knot, look at this you guys, when you make a knot it locks. You see that? I just did this live. This, this is a knot that it's not going to go anywhere. Okay? And the jute does this. If they both do the same thing, both quality. This, will not, this does not break. Right? And um, the ruby twine. Um, it's great for seat springs. It's the only thing I would use for seat springs. They do, believe it or not, they have a nylon replacement for this that doesn't have a wax coating and they slip off and slide. So I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use um, what they have for the replacement on the seat springs. So you have to be careful. You know, it's, it's 40 years of experience tells me which, which material to use where. So that's a good question. Wow, getting some good questions today, aren't we, Patrick? Yeah, this is awesome. All right. So let's go to the next one, unless we have another question. No. Um, so we, we, we did Tim, Texas. We have a lot, guys, because it's been two weeks, right? Um, so Ruth says, how to upholstery antique chair 
restoration. This is the cowboy chair, otherwise known as the cowboy chair, Patrick. Yeah. Is that what it is? So should have featured that in the 10,000 video. Did we? No, we should have. We didn't have it anymore, though, obviously. Well, we'll tell people what that is. That, that was a chair that came to me. It was a Victorian chair. When we took it apart, we found a, um, a grain sack in there, a burlap grain sack. They use burlap. You know, you could use a grain sack. It's burlap. It's fine. Um, and it had identification of Kansas City, Missouri. So we actually looked up, we, we looked up the company and we found the, the company owner. He was on Wikipedia. I guess he was famous in that area, right, Patrick? Yeah. Do you, remember you put that p picture of him and a little history about him up yeah, there? Yeah, that's really cool. I can't believe we found him. But then, him. then we thought, wait a minute, that chair was, that, that chair's from the 1860s. And then we started thinking, oh, we know that there were gunslingers around there. We had just had fun imagining that the chair maybe Jesse James sat on that chair you know or somebody so somebody once asked you know how do you get how do you not get bored we never get bored do we Patrick no boy Lots we have ideas we have a lot of ideas and before we leave we have to show you guys I can't believe I forgot you're not gonna believe this the biggest sofa that I have ever seen in over 40 years of upholstery came to the shop <laughs> And I'm so excited to show you. got to do a video on that. Actually, can we do it now, Patrick? Sure. I, show uh, it. Please. Well, first of all, I want Michaela to go really slow when she goes <laughs> over here. And I want, it, I want her to stop at this sofa that's over here. If she can, I don't know if she can get this sofa. Can you get that sofa? So, you guys, this is a big sofa. This is a good-sized sofa. It's a mid-century, but it's a good length. Now you're going to see such a super size next to it. You're not going to believe it. Take a look next to it. <laughs> the camera doesn't even go that high. <laughs> it's almost touching on. We have high ceilings here. It's 115 inches long. Look, I could stand. I could stand in it and I still have how many feet? Three feet, I don't know. It's unbelievable, you guys. I've never seen anything like this. It took four movers, four guys, four strong, burly guys to come in to deliver this. Are you sure it doesn't belong to Shaq? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Anyhow, longest, the biggest sofa I've ever seen. It has, it's 115 inches this long. And, you know, I know people are going to be asking this, so I'm going to get, I'm going to get the tip on it to see. Forty-one inches, so it's forty-one inches from the front of the arm to the back, and hundred and fifteen this way. When it was down on the floor in the shop, it took the whole shop up. It couldn't move. Crazy. So, so do we ever get bored, Patrick? No. I like something different coming in. So. <laughs> you know, people make it. People make it interesting. People in their furniture, you know. And some of the stories. I had a woman come in. I just did a, a couple of chairs for a woman, and she was from Oklahoma. And she had six, fifth, fifth generation furniture. And of course, you know, knowing a little bit of history, um, I, I associate that with the Dust Bowl. I'm thinking these chairs that she had were actually on a farm, probably, and they were in the Dust Bowl. You know, they were probably in a dust. You know, do you know what the Dust Bowl is, Patrick? In the middle of the country, right? Yeah, you remember that was flat. terribly in the 30s. Arlo Guthrie was going around. He was Arlo Guthrie. He's a famous American singer that maybe our uh, overseas friend don't know, but he's a folk singer. He was actually hired by the government to go out into the countryside where this was, where they were being affected and just try to cheer people up and sing songs. You know. And so, 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 how, do we get bored? No. So the chair brought back uh, some stories about the Dust Bowl, and of course, we know the Grapes of Wrath, a famous movie, one of my favorites, right? That was about the Dust Bowl. But I remember the story about Arlo Guthrie. Arlo Guthrie was in was in the middle of one of these huge storms, and they were inside uh, a barn, and there was one light, fluorescent light bulb, hanging from you know the ceiling, and it was on. And there were about four or five guys standing around, and everything was pitch black. And they were all looking at that one light bulb. That was it. That's all the light that they had. Can you imagine? Imagine that. So, so no, we don't get bored. No, we don't get bored. Right, Pat? Nope. <laughs> so, uh, Nicholas, this is the art of spitting tax. This is a good story from Nicholas. Speaking of stories, right? 
So we did this we did this video about spitting tax. I don't recommend anybody spit tax today. There's no need to with the pneumatic staple guns. There shouldn't be any reason to spit tax anymore. I don't do it anymore, so I wouldn't advise anybody else. But at the time I was doing them. I first started in this business in the 80s. That's all we had. We didn't have the pneumatic staple guns, so we, we learned how to spit tax. I, I do know how to do it, but why do that when you have the when you have the pneumatic gun and there are ways of using the pneumatic gun as a tack and we've shown you that how to do that on the videos so Nicholas he says I came here from the Baumgartner restoration I guess that's the name of his shop where he spits tacks to stretch a 100 year old canvas and he's got the YouTube link on here Patrick and he's got the time that he spits the tax at 20 minute 26. I'm not sure if people would be interested in this, but he said, I thought he was joking when he put a handful of tax in his mouth. I didn't realize that it was actually a thing until he started actually spitting tax. <laughs> Reminds me of another story pattern. I've got to tell it because it's so funny. So, you know, I was telling you, you know, I never miss up an opportunity for free advertisement, you guys. I, I, if, if a local television station wants to come in, and in this case, it's one of the local Boston stations, wanted to come into the shop, but we had multiple talented uh, people in there, and um, to all different tradespeople, and they made one contingency. They were going to come in and film, but, and the produce, they were going to do like a, a narration. They didn't want anybody to talk. So uh, I got a group of the people together, the managers, and I said, you know, your, your job is to get them to interview you. But they said they wouldn't, they wouldn't, didn't want an interview. They were very sure about that. I said, that doesn't matter. Your, your job and my job is to get something so interesting that they're going to have to interview you. So think about that. So that's all I said to them. So my idea. So I had, I had a chair set up and I had my magnetic tie. I had it set up so when they came in, I had a mouthful of six ounce tacks. This is when I was spitting tacks. A mouthful of six ounce tacks. And of course, you know, she comes over, they, they're not on camera, so how are you? I'm doing good, how are you? They, they don't know, this tax in my mouth, I can speak normally. And um, she says, okay, we're going to start filming. And so, so all of a sudden, I pick my hammer up, and I'm, I'm tacking away. Really, it's fast. And when, when you see somebody spitting tax, if they're right-handed, they're using your right hand to, to, for the tax. Their left hand, is, it's kind of like a balancing it's, you can't have your hand in your pocket. Your left hand is usually up like this, all right? So she's watching me. She's got the camera on me. So I'm going to I'm going to do it really slow. I'm not going to use tacks, but this is this is what you do. You have a mouthful of tacks. You take your tongue on one tack at a time. Your tongue flips the tack if need be. Flips the tack so the head of the tack is right in your at your lips. So that when you come up like this, the, this little, we've talked about this, you guys, this like little bit of a dip here, it meets the mouth perfectly, right? And, you, and you're this way, and you flip it back, and then you hammer. So I was doing it so fast. She said, cut, right? So she, she picked up the hammer, and she's looking at the hammer. She's find, trying to find out where the, where the hole is for the tacks. And she, she, she said, where do you put the tacks? Where, where, do the, where are the tacks coming out of the hammer? <clears throat> I said, they're not coming out of the hammer. They're coming out of my mouth. <laughs> so, she had the cameraman slow it down because she couldn't believe that I was actually spitting tacks. But I was doing it so fast that they, they, they couldn't see it. They did see it when they slowed it down. And so who do you think got on a speaking role in that on that segment on that local TV, yeah. So I mean, um, I wasn't doing it to be a wise guy. I thought it was important as a business person. Um, if if somebody is willing to come in, if a local station is coming in, they're coming with sound people, they're coming with the equipment, coming with the producer, and a, you know, director, and and then all the editing equipment. There, why not take advantage of it, right? So that was fun. Anyhow, did you like that story, Patrick? Yeah, that was pretty cool. He's probably bored. No, a few more questions. And Mill says, off the top of your head, can you come up with a different brand that might be a little more uh, cheaper than Sunjala or Sunbrella? It sounds like he's looking for something that is uh, durable and stain resistant. Um, Sunbrella, I don't blame him. That can be expensive. 
Um, I don't know any of the brands. So you have to I mean, you can still get fabrics. You know, you, you know, guys, I, I do want to send out an environmental thing, you know. You can still get fabrics and fibers if his interest is protecting the fabric with Teflon coating. But I really, I really got a thing about Teflon. You guys know that Teflon is really goes into the environment and doesn't leave. I mean, they've actually traced, I think, I'll say the east coast of the United States, with Teflon manufacturer somewhere. I want to say a state, but I won't because I'm not sure. Um, so they produce the Teflon. They actually find the Teflon in polar bears. You know, I mean, it goes right through the ecosystem all the way up and down, up and down the ecosystem. So, um, and I don't think it's very good to have Teflon in you. You know, so I, I don't know. I, um, there's some new technologies, uh, and then that you should, you should actually be researching this and and be able to talk about why you'd want to not want to use a certain product. But there's a new technology, nanotexting, that does a, a great job. I'm pretty sure it's environmentally friendly. So go to the, always go to the environmentally friendly solution first. That's my motto, and that that would be good. Um, but again, I, I think it comes down to. Um, I'm going to give you a better answer. Hold on one second. I'm just going to go off camera for a minute. So first run fabrics. See, um, first run fabrics always have the fabric identified and it gives you a list of things. Like, for instance, this says 100% polyester, latex backed, I kind of like that, latex is softer, indoor and outdoor water and stain repellent, right? Cleaning coal, WSB, made, it tells you where it's made, made in Republic of Korea. This is a very important thing, heavy duty, 200,000 double rub, that's extremely high. That's a, I, I would consider this a very good fabric, um, but I have to tell you that the average design fabric Oh, by the way, it's eco-friendly. There you go. So always look for the labels. Always go with the most eco-friendly material that you can find. Then the most durable. So this is a good fabric. I mean, but average fabric from a book like this is going to be about $60, $60 a yard, easily. So keep that in mind. Um, so a lot of times we're doing side chairs. When, you know, somebody needs about four or five yards of fabric. That's... You know, you can, you can almost reason uh, to spend $60 a yard on the fabric. It's when you're doing sofas or sectionals or restaurants, things like that, where your fabric amounts start to creep up there. The cost can be, can be something. But, uh, you know, this is a whole nother... Again, I referenced those videos that we did with the Fabrics Patrick on the Broadway Upholstery School YouTube channel. Yeah, right? and they also actually mentioned he's seen... Uh, this was really cool, but it's true. He said he's seen every single one of our videos. What? <laughs> is he our number one fan? That's pretty cool. He said that? <laughs> number one fan. Are you kidding me? Number He's one. playing close to Janine. That's the whole thing. <laughs> and Erica. Yeah, that's still the top. Number one <laughs> fan. But I want to know if Erica and Janine's watched every single <laughs> And Pam. There's so many top fans. I, I don't want to just come, uh, point out one. I know. I can't believe it. He's I, climbing his way up the ladder quickly. Like. I want to ask <laughs> Anil, Anil, if you have, if you know anybody with, with the sleeping disorder, we suggest to watch my video while eating heavy, while eating turkey with heavy, <laughs> gra heavy gravy. You'll definitely not have a sleeping disorder out there. I mean, I'm not making fun of sleeping disorders, by the way. I'm not. I'm not. Um, and we have a question uh, from Sylvia. From okay. Sylvia, I am closing up the back of a simple, a simple Martha Washington chair. Do you have any advice on using ply grip? You know, um, if you want to know the traditional way of closing it up, you're, you're using, you're, you're doing the piping, and then you're doing the cardboard tack tape to make sure that the piping is sitting tight up against the wood, right? And then you're going to put a layer of cotton in there, but not, don't put the cotton too close to where you're going to be hand stitching. Keep it away. And then you're going to hand stitch it. You're going to pin it, pin the fabric, fold it, pin it, and then hand stitch it. That, that's the old-fashioned way. So if you have a Martha Washington chair, certainly um, that's how they did it. Now, that takes a while, so if you want to use the ply grip, make sure it's ply grip. Stay away from curvies. It sounds like that would be better, but it isn't. Ply grip is the original 
ply grip has the flexibility okay it's really important you don't use the other stuff it really sticks the other stuff I even have a hard time using it I don't know how anybody expands it so I'm gonna bring this up to the camera that's the that ply grip it, it what distinguishes it is has the two prongs the other stuff has the three prong and it's more silvery looking okay but the most important thing are the corners so when you're coming up let's say this is the right side and you're putting your ply grip on um, staple up to about even before I put it on I start at the top before I even put it on I'll cut a piece and then I'll come to the top I use my scissors you guys are probably going to think it's crazy but I take my scissors and I soften the edge look at that you guys see that so now if I was doing this without softening the edge like that edge there that actually would poke I might get cut this stuff can cut you okay but you have to soften the edge up and if you have a fabric so then you're going to staple it staple it down and then you do the same thing on the bottom so you don't want to keep you don't want uh, you don't want one like that you want to cut that and then soften up the bottom too okay and then I want to show you so when you're up at the top this is very important too. Up at the top, you soften this side, and you want to make sure that you're close, right? And then one side always does better as a pleat to the other side, and you just trial and error that. Does that make sense? But ply grip is wonderful. It speeds you up. It's about, I would say, putting ply grip on is at least one fifth the time uh, frame to the, maybe even more than that. For beginners, it might even be more. It might even be one tenth. Put ply grip one tenth the time for beginners. Um, do we have any more questions before we get to these? We got some more here. Wow. Like I guess that we. Uh, this is from Jenny. Hi, Jenny. I tied the springs on the sofa back before I saw last week's slide. I use ruby twine. Should I redo it? I need to know what she's got for batting over that. So she needs to get back to me. So if she has, the sofa that I did here had had this much thickness of, of cotton. And and I, I seriously, I'm wondering if that would have made a difference. I don't think that may, would have made a difference if I had used the ruby twine on that. It's just, it's so much easier using this with the lightweight coil springs. So you struggled with the with the ruby twine. I think I think you're fine. I think. I think if it's a very thin treatment, so here's the answer. If you're putting, a, if it's a very thin amount of material or batting, um, you might have to, but I think if it's thick, and usually it is, I think you're okay. It's just a fine, one of those fine points, right? It's, it's, it's not, you'd, you'd be okay. Um, so here we have a rear fine, how to upholster 1860 chair restoration. Which one was this, Patrick? That was part of the uh, other one, I thought. It was part two, probably. I'm not sure. It's a rare find. I, I don't remember this. That was the first video. That was a series, remember? That was the first video of the 1800s share. We had like three oh, okay. parts of it. Yeah. This is from um, Jane. Just found this brilliant site, and it's so interesting. I am from West Sussex, um, United Kingdom, and love working on old chairs. And this era and to do traditional upholstery, but often check out websites to make sure that I'm doing it correctly or just because I've forgive, forgotten your site is a great way to learn new techniques. I can so relate to the excitement of undoing the cake, she's got that parentheses, the cake, um, and unleashing the history that awaits. I love that. I love that. It's like a poem, Patrick and sometimes being amused and so impressed by some of the ways the upholsterer has achieved the desired effect. Just love your site, many thanks. Well, that's great. We have friends all over, don't we, Patrick? Yeah, everywhere, everywhere. But I like what she says here. I'm going to read this again. She says, uh, she says, I can so relate to the excitement of undoing the cake and unleashing the history that awaits. <laughs> I love that. So the next one is uh, from Ashdown. Ashdown. That's John, uh, John oh. from Ireland. Oh, is that John? Yes. 
uh, he says, uh, enjoy the holiday. <laughs> it wasn't a holiday, Patrick? Oh, that was last week. Uh, I, I yeah. should tell everybody, it was Patrick's holiday. I was still working. That's my, my fault because I'm confused. I'm <laughs> sure you wish you were there, though, Dad. Yeah. So this is uh, how to upholster a dining room chair for padding on an outside back. So this is from April. I just happened on your channels. I considered tackling my first upholstery project. And I just want to say that you explain things so intuitively. Hey, did, did I write this, Patrick? <laughs> so intuitively, and it all makes Busted. perfect sense as you go along explaining that I quickly start to visualize and anticipate what you will say next. Of course, I immediately identified your accent as I am also from the Metro West area. Easy to understand and well explained instruction. Thank you. I feel like this might actually be enjoyable to undertake my project. Now, well, thank you, April. Yeah, that, that's great. N nice compliments. Um, I want to thank you for the compliments. And I, I have to thank Patrick and Michaela. You know, there's things that go be behind the scenes that they don't often get credit for. But just the introductions today that Patrick did, I think that's a, that's a t certain talent. And uh, I could never do what they do. I know that they can't do what I do, but I mean, we, we make a good team. But, Definitely not. <laughs> right? Uh, but I, I tell you, uh, the camera angles, we have how many stations? Do we have three three camera angles, four, Patrick? Four, count the overhead view. We, have we only four. have two cameras, though. It's the only problem. <laughs> two, we only have two cameras. We have four camera angles. So Patrick's always up on ladders. These things you don't see. Uh, he's up on ladders. He's down, running up and down the basement. He's fixing equipment. He's panicking. I can't tell you how many close calls we've had on the live show right there. Uh, <laughs> when we, we lost one yesterday, but we had a lot that we were like right to the minute. You know, and we were just getting ready. Either I wasn't ready or... So it's been fun. It really is fun to do that's it. That's what I mentioned. We're going to be doing a lot of on those lives. We're going to do a lot more stuff with the YouTube channel now. Like we're going to be doing giveaways. Oh yeah, because we got soon. the 10,000, right? So like if we reach a certain milestone, um, with our subscribers, we'll give something away to you guys, mm -hmm. something from our site, you know. And or also something. the shop on YouTube. Yeah, we started doing, a lot of people were talking about, Janine wanted a t-shirt, I know that. So we started, since we had 10,000 now, we can now sell Teespring stuff, so we made all that. Are those it's, available, Patrick? It might be up, last time I checked, it still wasn't up, so I'm going to have to figure out why it's not showing up. We made a bunch of, we made a, a face mask. Oh, I mean, you well. actually did that. Pat, yeah, so. Pat, it said it would take um, one to two business days to show up in the shop. So yeah, we've started it, so those will be available soon. If you want an official, uh, our official logo t shirt, that'll be coming soon. And um, we're also going to be starting Patreon soon, so you guys can donate to us. And everything we get will go towards the production of uh, the shows and everything we do, so that'll be starting soon as well. Oh, good, Patrick, yeah. And you know, you should tell people. I always tell people, and I've watched other people tell people that, you know, with the Patreon and the donations, we, we really appreciate that. Yeah, and Janine did one uh, two weeks ago. We've already used her money to, you know, do stuff on the website. So. But we also want to say, I mean, we've helped people who, you know, single mothers with kids, and sometimes they're hot, they're hot bends and they want to give you money. We're not looking for that, right, Patrick? No, I mean, no just well, everything goes towards the production of this. It's not, you know, yeah, nothing I mean, we're I mean, We don't want anybody to hurt themselves by, by donating, but it's actually very helpful. I mean, the, the, we had a thing that happened today. What was it, Patrick, with the hard drive? Right. That you know, these things cost money. It's it's expensive to run this stuff, right? Like very, very. So, um, and you know, at the initial startups, one thing, and then there's the maintenance that goes with it, and the, and then the upgrading. <laughs> Can't tell you, it's it's a constant. So what, what I, I I equate what we did here with um, getting off the subject a little bit, but with um, you know, 25 years ago, I did a, a small thing for this old house, where it was a spinoff of this old house. And I, I was astonished at how much it took to, you know, to do one tape of, you know, one 15, 20 minute tape. You know, you're talking about bigger, bigger equipment, a cumbersome equipment, and, and more people. It seemed like they needed more people, Patrick, to do what you do. Right. But Pat, what Patrick's done here is pretty much uh, what, what a movie studio, we're a movie studio, aren't we? Man, even Come beyond on. that, now we're trying to take it to the streets with the, the, new, the new show. <laughs> That's a little tougher, isn't it, Patrick? Yeah, because you have to you have to record everything yeah. and put it on after. This it's easy to record it right from the computer as we're doing it. But the whole thing is to try to make a comfortable learning 
I think bottom line is to make a comfortable learning experience, to make not make it look too hard, to make it actually look easy if we can. Right. Uh, but and I mean, we've, I think we got to jump on board of this whole Zoom thing at some point too. Yeah, I think to do that. I think you're right. I think the pro I do have some issues with with that though. I we should talk more about it. I'm not sure. We could try it and see how it works. Maybe what we should do is try it with some of our people who have been with us for a while. Right. You know, maybe we should try that first and then get their opinion about how it, how it, how it looks. And those would be why classes, you know. Right. I I worry a little bit about um, the explanations. I don't know. We'll see. We'll be searching. Yeah. Okay. So Chippendale Velvet Time. The. Uh, so the Sylvia wants to know if you have any pictures of when you were apprenticing. Back in the 1800s, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have one with George Washington. I'll tell you wow. this story, yeah. You look good, though. Yeah, I did. Uh, no, I, just, I mean, now. You look good now. Like, that's oh, what's the, your secret? I've mentioned this before in last week's, but it's worth mentioning. George Washington took his tour of the country after the Revolutionary War. They, they, they had a parade in Boston. Now, today we, we have all kinds of crazy parades. Back then, what are we going to show? Let's show all the local craftsmen. And guess there was one upholsterer there showing the only criteria was it had to be something you go by George Washington with your thing, right? I mean, there were Coopers, there was, uh, you know, blacksmiths, and there was an upholsterer. I don't know what he had, but he had something. It wasn't me. Wise guy. <laughs> Wise guy. <laughs> oh, ten generations ago, there was an upholsterer, and he had something in his hand. But that was the parade. Isn't that great? I mean, we should bring that back. You know, it's kind of something very wholesome about that, right? Right. Anyhow, so Janine says, looking good will be, she's talking about the sofa that we're, that we're building. Will there be seams in the inside back? Did you railroad the fabric or was it wide enough for one piece? Actually, Janine, that's a good question. This was a velvet that I actually railroaded, so you can railroad some velvets. Velvets, uh, you just look for a very low nap if you're going to do that. Um, I didn't want a seam, so we... we we actually picked, we, the color was blue, but I actually picked the fabric, the velvet, that I could railroad, because that wouldn't have fit. No, this, this is about 84 inches long, so we couldn't have got a width of fabric out of that. Um, so it brings up a little bit of a dilemma, doesn't it? But some velvets you can railroad, and this was one of them. It came out great. Wait till you guys see it. Janine also asks, um, this is about saving fabric by railroading. So I, I showed mathematically in that video, Patrick, how much was saved on a particular piece. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm, that was uh, recent. I think we, we came, it was like a yard and a half or two yards of fabric that we saved by railroading the fabric, which Anil, for you, if you're going to be manufacturing, that's so important because you, you need to, if you're going to be doing multiple pieces, you need to make sure that you know, you're cutting it out the best way you can cut the fabric out, best use of the fabric, right? I, and Anil, I still can't believe that Anil's watched every single. I mean, Patty, we gotta have 200. Yeah, definitely. We do the over two, I think. Wow. Well, I mean, he has asked too about manufacturing. Um, more manufacturing videos. We'll have to look into that. And this is Leslie. Oh, we have another fan from Australia, Patrick. I wonder if she knows Janine. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's a very big country, Patrick. Oh, really? Yeah, or well, maybe she could be a friend. And, <laughs> you know. This is a saving fabric by railroading. Again, another, another one of those. A question, a comment on that. Thanks, Kevin. Love your videos. Learning heaps from Australia. You know, is it me or do I find that Australians like to talk, you know, maybe it's because of the kangaroo. They're always talking about hopping and heaps. <laughs> And jumps and things like that. Did did you find that, Patrick? Yeah, I don't even mention it. <laughs> no, now they're going to be mad at me. I'm not poking fun. We love Australians. Um, and then from Tex Texas, Mickey again about the poultry show, Blue Velvet. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And Colleen, I think this is the last one I have, Patrick. This well, is the last of the. A lot today. To catch up on. It's called stuffing. The, the the video was called stuffing a cushion and effectively, and then Colleen. Cheaply and effectively. Yeah, Colleen says, "Can you take a half a bull nose back cushion and make it into a square cushion?" Wow, another good question. Wow. So she's talking about a, 
Some people call them bull nose. I call them waterfall cushions. So when she says a half a bull nose, I'm going to have to write this out. I'm going to have to draw this out. I know what she's talking about. Is this going on an hour and a half? Patrick? Yep. Yeah, we're going to finish up with this bull. Yeah, so you're going over, but we have a lot to catch up on. We're making up for a missed day. <laughs> so she's talking about front. This is the front of the cushion. It has like a pleat here and a pleat here and a piping here. Pleat here. And Elvis wants here. to say 2 a.m. in India. So 2 a.m. Maybe, maybe he's going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anel. So, so this is hard to show. Um, Actually, let's see. Ooh, I had one. As luck would have it. I have one over here, you guys. So this is this is what she's talking about—a half bull nose with the with the welt here. And she's asking if you can actually turn this into a boxed cushion. Well, first of all, you need the fabric to do that. Secondly, it's going to be a little shorter. So this is a back cushion. So if you can do it. The answer is you can do it. Uh, it's a tougher job, though. You know, you're going to have to cut this out, cut both sides out. It's going to be a. a it's. A, it, she's she's talking about an existing cushion, and maybe she definitely needs like a yada fabric, extra fabric. So if she doesn't have the fabric, I would say that you can't do it. But um, you can see there's a problem here. You don't have enough fabric. So um, that's the problem. So if she has a yard of fabric, certainly she can do it. She can cut this out, this out, make a boxing for it, cut the piping, make two, two pipings, and then sew a cushion up. So that's, that's a good question. I, I don't think you can do it um, if you don't have extra fabric. That's my answer. So, Patrick, unless this, is there any other business that you want to talk about? That's it. I can't believe that I talked for an hour and a half, you guys, uh, but I hope that that was informative. I know sometimes I get a little off subject, but we have fun, and that's, that's the key. And We try to um, approach upholstery in a friendly manner, in a light, jovial manner, and, and hopefully that's a good learning uh, tool for most people, especially beginners. We've got a lot of beginners, I noticed, Patrick, yes, who do. are asking questions, so we hope that Take advantage of our free YouTube videos, and by all means, explore the site, the Boston uh, Broadway Upholstery School site. I mean, if you just want to look at it and not buy anything, go on there and see some of the classes, some of the in-depth online classes, much different than the YouTube videos. Much different, much, much more information on those. I would say that at every episode of the shows, we've got, what, how many individual shows do we have, Patrick? Hundreds? I don't know. Are the live, at this point, we've I don't know how long we've been streaming for. We've, we've <laughs> we have a lot of shows up, and, and each one, they, they, they go from like an hour. They're like an hour on average, um, some more, some less. And each one has at least three points, um, three interesting points that I would never talk about on a YouTube channel. I would never think about it. But the person taking the class does think about it and ask the question on camera. So that's the difference between the online classes and the YouTube. So, but we love our YouTube. Don't get us wrong, and and we love the online classes. So check us out. You know, explore like Anil is exploring every every uh, corner of, of Broadway Upholstery School, and we really we're really thrilled about that. And, and we hope that we hope that everybody has uh, good luck in, in upholstery. So we'll see you later.